What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. Yesterday, we made a video discussing the meta implications of the Lucio changes. Still plenty more to discuss on that end of things, but today, I want to discuss more about the playstyle that the new Lucio will have, ways to optimize it, as well as things to look out for, pitfalls that you don't want to run into. Our opinion on Lucio is quite nuanced and difficult to express. In short, I think that pros will still use him just as much, functionally speaking. Maybe the pick rate might go down to 80 to 90% instead of 97, but he's still amazing at what he did before, it's just a little bit harder to utilize it, needing more team coordination to do so, but pros have that, that's not a problem. But even more importantly is what he's able to do in setting up fights with booping tanks around and making openings for team fights to happen, because boop is just so much stronger now. You boop a Ryan towards you, at the right time, it could be the entire team fight won, based on that one Lucio play. So you wanted impact, ladies and gentlemen, you got it. But the weird thing is that this new skill-based Lucio requires more mastery of Lucio's kit in order to get that value out of him. So it's not that we were only looking out for the top levels of play when we expressed concern about these changes. I'm more worried about all of the matchmaking players who might struggle to be able to play the more difficult Lucio, but also a bit of a misrepresentation of what Lucio should be doing. I think there's like a smaller sub-community of Lucio players in Overwatch that treat his skill set a bit more like a Harlem Globetrotter, where they go off on their own most of the time. And I gotta tell you, don't do that. <laughs> Now with Lucio's auras being so close to him, there actually is incredibly interesting and compelling play to get that aura where you need it, when you need it. That's where a big chunk of Lucio's skill set's going to be from now on, making sure that you're positioning yourself in such a way that you can keep in the action and pocket the right targets on your team in order to support them, because you of course are a support and it's a team-based game. And if you tunnel vision too quickly with Lucio and focus just on wall riding and getting yourself places, you can quickly be kind of letting your team down. Let's look at this clip on Hanamura, where the enemy team actually has a few picks and are going to aggress onto the point. I boop them not off the map, but at the very least away from the point, so they're going to have to go up the stairs in order to get back to us. The enemy team's Lucio, though, for whatever reason, decides to, instead of keeping his aura next to his team, ferrying them around and making sure that he's getting them where they need to be, he uses his mobility to do nothing. And this is something that I want to look out for and try to warn you guys against from doing. Anytime you go on some wacky wall ride mission across the map, be careful that you're not doing nothing, because it's very easy to do nothing as Lucio now that his aura is so small. It's okay for, to go for these extravagant wall ride boot plays, but you have to get value out of them. It's just like flanking with a McCree High Noon, flanking as a Roadhog. It's a risk-reward playstyle because it puts you out of position, and it doesn't matter how great you are at wall riding in order to keep yourself alive, you could be effectively letting your team down. It's just like a Reinhardt who doesn't put his shield in the right place. That's how difficult Lucio is now. It's the most functional equivalent that I could think of. Reinhardt's barrier is incredibly powerful, but if it's in the wrong spot, it does nothing. Lucio's aura is in the same way, so you want to be very cognizant while playing Lucio now to make sure that you're mobile in the fight and looking out for where your teammates are going and ferry them around. Enable them to be able to do their job and don't tunnel vision just on what you want to do. Now with Lucio's song area of effect being significantly diminished, a friend of ours, Lone Hawk, made a video and explained that 10 meters down from 30 meters isn't a third, actually. It's nine times less surface area because a circle obviously expands in every direction. It isn't simply like a damage number where if the number goes down by a third, that's actually a third less effective area. No, it's a circle. Math is hard, I know. Lone Hawk must be an engineering major or something. With that being the case, it's a much bigger responsibility to play Lucio. So make sure you're getting where you need to be. There's going to be a few characters that are going to be really hard for you to heal, and you might even not think of them as synergistic with Lucio that much anymore. Bara, Genji, Tracer, going to be really hard for you to keep up with them because they move so much faster than you do, and oftentimes the flanking angles they play, you're not going to want to do. But characters like Reaper and Winston, who sort of stay there welcome in a spot a little bit longer, whereas Tracer and Genji kind of jump around and move more, Winston and Reaper kind of set up in a spot and then engage on it for a bit, then leap out. Lucio now is somewhat better combining with those characters because his healing song is so much stronger. So characters that want to stand and fight for a little bit are going to see an added benefit when getting pocketed by Lucio because not only can he ferry them into position, he then can swap to his healing song 
and heal them like he never could before. Something else that you want to be looking out for is constantly managing that area of effect of your song. It's great that your teammates get to see it as well, but it's your responsibility as the Lucio player to keep where it needs to be. So that means you might want to be swapping over to crossfade to speed yourself into a spot and then swap back onto healing in order to pocket the characters that need healing. Because before you could just pop healing and be wherever in line of sight and it'd be fine. Now you're gonna have to be constantly struggling to keep up with your teammates so that they don't die. Luckily now it's worth it because his healing is so much more powerful and it probably is the case now that the new Lucio has perhaps equal value in amping speed and heals. Before amping heals was a bit negligible in comparison to speed and you might wanna be more reserved with your amp timings and passive heal targets just so that you can wait to use speed because it was so much more powerful. But now with 54 healing a second in that small area, it's got a bit of an oomph to that heal. So much so that in a coordinated fight, that can be a big difference maker with helping your tank or DPS character win the duel that they're fighting. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. A new, more compelling and challenging Lucio. Definitely a good thing for the game, but does it necessarily move his must-pick status any bit? The main reason being is that the map design and the objectives that we're playing in Overwatch are largely the issue with Lucio being so good and so dominant at the top level of play. Of course, Lucio is the only character with the components that his kit has, but also as well, a lot of the win conditions of winning engagements in a lot of these maps in the way that they're built almost necessitates speed boost to be used. So I don't know if we're ever going to see Blizzard get Lucio to a spot where his pick rate just plummets to be equal to every other support, because I think that draws a blind eye to the actions that the game is requiring you to do in order to overcome the team fights that it gives you with the way the maps are designed. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and you're gonna wanna hit the bell icon so that you can get notified when our videos go live. Join the squadron of notification. Linked in the description, you can check out our Discord server where you can find teammates to pair up with and interact with our community. Our Twitter, where we tweet out updates and interact with you guys on our opinions about the game. And also our Twitch live stream, where we stream Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's been it for me. It's been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.